Hello, my name is Mark Gibson, and you're listening to the podcast version of the Chagask Signpost series, a weekly webinar that promotes and examines sustainability in Irish farming. Welcome to this morning's Signpost webinar, which is brought to you in association with Dairy Sustainability Ireland, Food Drink Ireland Skillnet, and the National Rural Network. I'm joined this morning by uh, Rebecca Davis and Molly Burns from, from Leaf. Uh, delighted that you could join us. Uh, Rebecca, you might just give us a, a, a very brief description of Leaf, what it does and what its objectives are. Yeah, morning, everybody. Like that said, I'm Rebecca Davis. Um, I'm technical coordinator within the IFM team at Leaf. Leaf, I suppose, in, in one sentence, our ambition and aim is to deliver more sustainable farming, food and food systems through the implementation of integrated farm management. And I'll talk lots more about that in, okay. the, in the webinar. And uh, Molly, you might just introduce yourself and and uh, you're, you're based, I think, in, in the Midlands in, in the UK. Yes. So hi, my name is Molly um, and I am a technical officer on the Leaf Mark team. OK. So two aspects of it, the leaf and, and leaf mark, and we'll be getting both of those in, in, in the presentation. So I suppose without further ado, I'll get you to sh share your, your presentation and uh, uh, let, let's have a, a description of the, of the organisation, what you do and what you're, you're achieving. So, yeah, like I said, morning, everybody. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. The webinar this morning it's really about a background to leaf, so our achievements so far, our activities and our aspirations. Like I said, my name is Rebecca, and I sit within the integrated farm management team as a technical coordinator, and then my colleague here, Molly, technical officer within the leaf mark team. So we'll be sharing the presentation today. A quick outline of today's session. So I'll start off just sort of talking a little bit about who leaf are and what is integrated farm management then touching upon the LEAF network and the work that we do and some of the projects that we're a part of. And then I'll hand over to Molly, who will talk us through the LEAF Mark Assurance Scheme. And then we'll finish off with our strategy and our ambitions and commitment for the future. And then, of course, there's some time afterwards for questions. So who are LEAF? LEAF, Linking Environment and Farming. We are a leading organisation delivering and promoting climate positive farming through sort of uh, regenerative and nature-based solutions and that's through integrated farm management. We work with stakeholders across the whole industry really so we work with farmers, we work with researchers, policy, um, public consumers and the sort of aim is to look at how to deliver productivity and prosperity, looking at how to enrich the environment and engaging people, not just young people but society in a whole. A little bit about our history. So we were set up just over 30 years ago now. In 1991, so we celebrated our 30th anniversary last year. And we started off as a three-year project. So we've, we've come quite a long way since then. Um, our late CEO, Caroline Drummond, really drove the organisation, LEAF, as who we are today. We're a registered charity. So we have a board of trustees and our honorary president, Her Royal Highness, the Countess of Wessex. We are also a membership-based organisation. So LEAF itself was set up in 1991. And then in 2002, LEAFMARK, our assurance scheme, was born. And then 2006, we had Open Farms Day piloting. And that's happened every year ever since. Through lockdown, we managed to do online Farm Sunday. Um, so moving forward now, we'll be doing the two alongside each other. So it's been really nice to get back out on farm this year doing open farm Sundays in person. We are global, so LEAF, the organisation, in terms of the work that we do and the, the research and the projects we are a part of, work at the European level as, as well as other countries. And then from a LEAF mark point of view, we are in 19 countries. And more recently, so a few years ago, we merged with the organisation FACE FACE um, to create LEAF Education. And they're who run Open Farm Sunday. You can, sort of, you can imagine LEAF splitting into three key work streams. So there's the knowledge generation and exchange work stream, and that's where I sit. That's where my team sits, so the IFM team. That's all about, as it says on the tin, knowledge generation and exchange. So we have the, the LEAF network of demonstration farms, innovation centres, and more recently the Beacons of Excellence. 
And I, I guess that's kind of one of the main ethos behind behind Leaf is that farmer to farmer learning and that ability to demonstrate knowledge and learn from each other. So we hold a lot of events on farm events and training events where our members and, and farmers can come out and learn from each other and share knowledge. We also have our market opportunities work stream. So that's where Molly sits within the, the Leaf Mark team. And again, as it says on the tin, it's all about market opportunities and recognizing the good work that our farmers are doing but through implementing integrated farm management. And then finally, as I said previously, we recently have education and engaging society. So on the next couple of slides, you'll see the, the IFM wheel. And one of those sections is about engaging society. So it's a really core part of the work that LEAF do and, and integrated farm management. So it's not just about schools and, and school children uh, in terms of that sort of age. It's not just primary, it's the, the whole school. So going up to 16, 17, 18, working with those children, as well as members of the public and educating consumers. And really, it's just about getting the message of sustainable farming and, you know, where does food come from and try and bring everyone back in touch with their food and respecting their food. So I've talked quite a lot about integrated farm management, but what is it? It's a whole farm approach, farming approach, business approach. Um, and the aim is to deliver more sustainable farming at its core. It looks at the three pillars of sustainability, so economic, environmental and social health. And this is what I mean by the, the wheel, the IFM wheel. So it's made up of nine key areas. So you've got things like organisation and planning, landscape niche conservation, energy efficiency, pollution control and byproduct management. And it's, like I said, whole farm and site specific in that what works for one farm's problem isn't necessarily going to work for the same problem on another farm. So it's recognizing that site specificity um, and looking at that continuous improvement. It's a mindset approach. So the way that we like to talk about it is, is more of a framework and you can apply that framework to any business. It's also sort of key here to mention that not one area of integrated farm management is more important than another. So you can't just focus on your soil management and fertility and, and forget about the other areas because of the connectedness and the symbiosis between all of these areas. So you can't have soil management without looking after your water, without you know, looking after your landscape and nature, without being organised and having your plans and policies in place. Like I said, it's whole farm. It's about attention to detail on your business. So it's site specific and it's a combination. So it's not all about using the most modern technologies and, and looking for, for what's new. Of course, that's part of it. But it's also looking at those traditional methods and what has worked for you previously. If it's working, there's, there's no reason to not do that. It's just about optimizing those methods. So through the implementation of integrated farm management, we're delivering prosperous farming, um, environmental enrichment we're engaging our local communities and it's all about continuous improvement so it's about setting targets and then have you met those targets if so great let's set more if we haven't met those targets why not what can we do to meet them next time a little bit now about our network so we have a network like sort of demonstration farms and innovation centers our demonstration farms are all commercial working farms and I like to sort of talk about them as ambassadors of LEAF, ambassadors of integrated farm management. We've got over 40 now in the UK, and we are looking at branching out to be more international with our demonstration farm. So like I said, they are commercial, they are working, but at the same time, they are delivering the best of integrated farm management. They're delivering the best of um, the farming industry. So as, as a whole business, they're, they're doing really well but also they can, but they're focusing on individual aspects so there's a big long list there. I'm not going to read that out don't worry but some examples we've got quite a few looking quite in detail about agroforestry um, implementing nature-based solutions looking at real rewilding we've got a couple of our demonstration farms working with small robot company here in England looking at electric weed control and robotic weed control robotic harvesting and things like that and then with our innovation centres, 
So we've got, I think there's about 14 innovation centres now, again, in the UK, spread across the UK. And they are organisations like ourselves, so NGOs, or they might be universities or other research institutes. And they are really driving research behind integrated farm management. And again, on the right here, the list of some of the things that they're focusing on. And together, the LEAF networks, so the demonstration farms and the innovation centres, they, they work together, they share knowledge. So you've got the innovation centres passing down sort of top level research to us and to our demonstration farms and also our demonstration farms passing up information about what's working on the ground and what's realistic. So they work together and they drive forward sustainable agriculture. And then finally, from me, before I pass over to Molly to talk about the Leaf Mark Assurance Scheme, it's just a bit of an example of the projects that we're working on. So our activities on this slide, there's just lots of logos of all the projects. So some of these projects are leaf education. So over here, we've got CBAS, which is on farm training. So that's training for farmers to do farm visits, whether that's sort of like care farm, therapeutic visits or educational visits. Um, they also do Open Farm Sunday. So for those of you that might not be aware of what that is, one Sunday a year, the farms open up to the public. That can be maybe 10 members of the public coming out for a farm walk for half an hour for an hour. We have some farms doing that. Or it can be on the other end. We've had sort of farms open and 3,000 members of the public come out and they have lots of different activities on. And it's just about getting the public and consumers back in touch with farming and respecting the work that farmers are doing, and understanding the work that our farmers are doing and how they're producing the food that we're eating. Some of the other projects are UK based. So, for example, we have Resilient and Ready. So that's in partnership with Corteva. And that's looking at um, we have applications and then we're working with a few farms on becoming more resilient businesses and, and they're working towards leaf mark and becoming demonstration farms. And then again, we've got um, Beacons of Excellence. So that's another network that we're developing. And the first Beacon of Excellence group cohort that we have are in regenerative agriculture. And we're, we're working to develop more of those Beacons of Excellence. And then there's some of the UK projects there. And then on top of that, we work on a lot of Horizon 2020 projects, now Horizon Europe. So that's um, European funded projects. So, and again, that's quite a wide plethora of, of topics. So we've got things from cover crops, IPM hubs, um, AgriCapture CO2 down here. That's looking at regenerative agriculture and the carbon market and how to measure and monitor carbon within the soil. Um, and then from a leaf mark point of view, we work with ICEAL as well. So just a really brief sort of overview, nice overview of the work, the history of leaf, our work streams and some of the work that we're currently doing. I'm now going to hand over to Molly to talk about the leaf mark assurance scheme. And then we'll finish off just on a couple of slides looking at leaf's vision for the future and our commitments. Thank you, Becky. OK, so LeafMark is a leading global assurance system recognising more sustainably farmed products. As mentioned, um, it is based on the sustainable farming principles of integrated farm management, which covers areas such as soil and water management, pollution control, crop health, animal welfare, community engagement, energy efficiency and landscape and nature conservation. Our assurance system ensures that LeafMark is robust, credible and independent. So our LeafMark certified businesses are audited annually by third party certification bodies. Leaf is also a full code compliant member of the International Social Environmental Accreditation and Labelling Alliance, ICEAL which ensures that LeafMark is robust in our standard setting, our monitoring and our joint approaches as a sustainability system. LeafMark also has earned recognition from the Environment Agency and has engagement with Envi the Environmental Land Management Scheme, also known as ELMS, and other upcoming and exciting projects. So what does integrated farm management mean in the context of LeafMark? 
So there are a few points that are defining features of LeafMark certification. The first is integrated farm management being a whole farm approach. Now, this translates into LeafMark certification by the LeafMark standard being relevant to all enterprises. So the LeafMark standard is the document that certified businesses are assessed against and it is relevant to all sectors of integrated farm management. We also have a number of not applicable sections, for example, animal husbandry, which ensures um, so which enables it to be adaptable to different contexts and also different scenarios. The second point is that integrated farm management is, as Becky has said, site specific, um, and we enable that in the LeafMark standard by it being plan based. So most sections of the standard require a management plan, and the intention of that is to enable recognition of the practices that are relevant to that business and gives the opportunity to define and implement them. There are, however, some practice based requirements that would be universal across all farms, such as health and safety risk assessments and staff training. Um, we also have the 10% habitat area and also an annual NG audit. And finally, there is continuous improvement. Now, this is enabled by target setting and evaluation from a LeafMark certification perspective. Um, it's also to take note of what has been achieved and whether the objectives need to be amended. Now, these can be more or less ambitious and the business should reflect on those each year. Um, the general format of the LeafMark standard is that in each section, apart from organisation and planning and engaging society, there are control points relevant to monitoring activities, planning activities and specific activities that are integral to that section of integrated farm management. Okay, so moving on to the journey to LeafMark. So the first step on a business's journey to LeafMark certification is to become a member of Leaf Charity. So the charity membership is based on farm size and a membership payment is made directly to Leaf. Now, once the business is a member of Leaf Charity, there are no time limits on preparing to become LeafMark certified but it does depend on where the business is starting from and what time scale the farmer is given. The business will then be asked to complete the LSFR, the Leaf Sustainable Farming Review, which is an online self-assessment tool. Now the LSFR is a great introduction to the principles of integrated farm management because it goes into a significant amount of detail regarding all aspects of integrated farm management. And if the business reach is fully achieved in several areas, then they are on their way to being ready for LeafMark certification. The third step is to continue working on implementing integrated farm management. So this is an ongoing process where the business will aim for continuous improvement over time and monitor their progress. And once the business feels ready to be certified, then they will contact a certification body and request an audit. And during the audit, the auditor will verify whether the business is meeting the requirements of the LeafMark standard. Now, this can happen in conjunction with or separately to the baseline system audit, such as Red Tractor or Global Gap. Um, but the majority of businesses choose to combine them due to a joint audit discount. Any non-conformances identified during the audit must be resolved in either 28 days if it is a recertification audit or within three months if it's the business's first audit and evidence to close those non-conformances will be submitted to the certification body and then approved and then if approved um, a leaf mark certificate is issued and this is effective for 12 months and then the cycle continues. Um, we like to think of this as an ongoing cycle of continuous improvement. So we don't frame it as a tick box exercise because that's not what it's meant to be. It's about having that mindset where the business can always be improving and what improvement looks like is specific to that business. So the standard requirements can be implemented to different degrees over time, depending on where the business is. So moving on to the LeafMark standard. So the LeafMark standard is based on the principles of integrated farm management, and there are nine sections that correspond to each of those nine areas, as we've discussed. The LeafMark standard lists all the requirements that the business needs to meet to become LeafMark certified. 
Um, and it's important to note, as I've already highlighted, that leaf mark certification is additional to approved baseline systems such as Red Tractor and Global Gap. So there needs to be a baseline certification for all of the business's products. Um, a leaf mark certification is based on a whole farm approach and must cover all enterprises. We also try to make the standard as accessible as possible. So it's available in English, French, Italian, Spanish, and for version 16, uh, Portuguese. The LeafMark standard also contains background inf information and links to guidance documents to help businesses meet the LeafMark requirement. So those can be management plan guidance and as of recently, management plan templates. Also guidance for terminology such as climate resilience, uh, collaboration, collective action, um, and so on. The standard is reviewed every three to five years. So, so as of the 1st of October, 2022, so this year, uh, we've just published our version 16 and are now working on version 17. Um, however, the standard is not effective until 1st of April, 2023, meaning businesses have six months to adapt their farming practices to meet those requirements. To be LeafMark certified, all essential control points must be achieved, and this can be seen from the E icon in the third column. So if the column contains an E, then this is an essential control point and must be achieved to be compliant with standard. The standard is also hybrid outcome based, so there are outcomes alongside the existing practice based approach. Now, this creates an opportunity for LEAF to communicate more closely on the impacts of implementing the LEAFMARK standard, measuring outcomes directly rather than proxying them with practices. And as Becky has stated, it's also global and relevant to all enterprises. Um, we should also state that we work alongside members from a diverse range of backgrounds in what is called a technical advisory committee um, that oversees the ongoing development of the LeafMark standard. So in there we have producers, uh, market faces, so these could be retailers, brands, processors. Um, we also have environmental and industry expertise and also permanent observers, so um, in this case UCAS. And also influencing the LeafMark standard is the feedback received from stakeholders during the public consultation. So the public consultation is to ensure all stakeholders have sufficient time and opportunity to provide input on revisions of the standard and also ensures stakeholders see how their input has been considered. So within LeafMark, we monitor and evaluate the impacts of LeafMark growers. So every year we publish our global impacts report, which describes what leaf mark certified businesses are doing and what they have achieved. So the global impact report also presents approaches leaf mark farmers are taking to implement more sustainable farming practices. So as of this year, um, there are currently 877 leaf mark certified businesses across 19 different countries producing 279 different crop classes on over uh, 310,500 hectares of land. Um, and a total of 48% of UK fruit and veg are now grown on LeafMark certified farms. And uh, just to give a bit of context, some of the top crops grown on LeafMark certified farms include wheat, potato, barley, lettuce, maize, broccoli, onions, oilseed rape, sugar beet, cauliflower, carrots, and peas. And as part of that report, uh, LeafMark farmers also tell us what type of regenerative practices they are implementing on their farm, how they are improving their soil management, and the steps they are taking to reduce their carbon footprint. So last year, for example, 44% of farmers reported that they are now using a carbon footprinting tool to track and record direct emissions from their farm. So that was just a, a nice overview of LeafMark, what the standard's about and, and how to become LeafMark certified and the impact of that standard and that assurance scheme. So I'm just going to finish off briefly, we've got a couple of minutes, but that's okay, on our vision and our ambition for the future. So our vision as an organisation deliver positive action for climate, nature, economy and society. That's for, for farming and the food sector. We're 
aiming to play a demonstrable part in transforming farming and food systems. So we're going to build on our work since LEAF was established and delivering that through agroecological and regenerative approaches. Our 10 year strategy outlines uh, eight commitments for the future. So building on LEAF's core capabilities and strength, we're going to continue to drive collective action with shared ambition amongst all stakeholders. So that's our members, our industry partners, young people, wider society, and our key stakeholders. And we're going to deliver against our eight commitments, which I'll, I'll talk about briefly in a minute, through our work streams and core themes. So our three core work streams being knowledge generation and exchange, education, engaging society, and market opportunity, all through the lens of looking at health, enrichment, and diversity, and developing that. So our eight commitments for the future, we will deliver climate positive solutions. So we're going to develop and disseminate IFM, integrated farm management, advancing whole farm systems to embrace regenerative and nature based solutions. We will create more beacons of excellence. So we're going to strengthen our network of demonstration farms and innovation centres and create platforms that support beacons of excellence within farming. So like I've mentioned previously, we already have our cohort of regenerative beacons of excellence and we're working towards the next cohort, looking at water management. And again, in the future, we're going to be looking at circular agriculture, net zero, zero plastic waste. We will um, support the measurement of impact and harmonisation of metrics. So building on science and innovations to identify practices, um, looking at monitoring methods, technology, and developing partnerships to construct outcome and impact-based measurements. We will build sustainable food chains, so strengthen the opportunities in the marketplace through LeafMark to provide a reward for farmers, and also create an opportunity for consumers to make that informed choice, which develops that shared value for consumers and society. We're also going to grow and strengthen education and engaging society. So we want to positively influence the future generations about agriculture. We want them to support farming, the industry. Um, we want them to support food production. We want them to support the environment. So we're going to deliver some stimulating and inspiring opportunities. We will cultivate sustainable health and well-being. So we want to position farmers in the food sector as part of the solution to delivering more sustainable health and well-being, building on the existing networks and creating new networks and solutions. So looking at training to drive um, leadership and practical solutions, putting farming at centre stage. We will build more connections and strengthen our connections, so working smarter and more collaboratively. And finally, scale up our reach. So we want to create pathways and drive transformative change at a significant scale within the UK and also globally. So our, our LEAF network of demonstration farms and innovation centres are currently in the UK, but our goal for the next 10 years is to, to, to develop that and scale that up and have international demonstration farms and innovation centres. And then finally, if I pass to you, Molly. Yes, so um, here are some links to things that we've discussed that might be useful to you. Um, these are also available on the website amongst other useful links, so please do have a look if you're interested. Okay, that's really, really good. And uh, we have questions flying in. And just to, to remind people to use the, the, the Q&A to, to uh, um, send in their, their, their questions. Um, I suppose just one of the first things, how is the, uh, I suppose, the, the advantage and the, the, the benefit of being in LEAF uh, uh, generated from the marketplace or to what degree is, is LEAF uh, known to, to consumers and customers? Yeah, so there's, I guess, two aspects to that in that there's LEAF, the organisation and the work that we do, and then LEAF Mark, the, mm. the assurance scheme. So Leaf Mark, the assurance, um, one of our recent, we have independent evaluations every couple of years looking at the impact of our standard and our assurance scheme. And it highlighted that I think it was of the people surveys, it was just under 50% recognised what Leaf Mark stood for, which is really positive. But again, it's always about scaling up. So we, we want to do better and do more. From a LEAF point of view, in terms of the organisation, 
because of the engagement we have with schools and from the education side of things, we are quite well known here in the in, in England anyway. Um, and I, one thing I didn't mention was farmer time. So that's where we pair up school classrooms with farmers. And that's in the UK, Sweden, Norway, Australia. So there's there's different benefits. Our members are not just farmers. You can be a corporate member. You can be an education member. So there's this we, we deliver different things depending on your industry that you're sat within. OK, and I, I suppose one of the, the, uh, the, the questions coming in is about the, the numbers of membership, the, pro, the you described the process of membership. I think w one thing that there's a bit of curiousness about is that the costing and the, the funding model for the, the organisation, is it purely from members funding or are there other streams yeah. of funding that you, you can generate? It's other streams. So membership, like I said, it, it, you have different formats of membership. You can have individual farmer membership, and that is based on the land that, that, that you manage or own, essentially. Um, so I think it's starting from £130 a year and, and goes up depending on the size of farm. And then we also have corporate membership, education membership. All those prices differ on the website. But yeah, we're, we're not solely funded by membership. We're very fortunate to have quite a lot of sponsors that support the work that LEAF do. We have sponsorships come in. And then also I mentioned some of those projects on the previous slide. That's that's where we get some of our funding from. So whether that's UK or European funding, the work that we do on those projects. And I suppose, I suppose, a specific the uh, European funding and the horizon is that still as open to you as it was before Brexit? Uh, it's still, yeah, yeah, okay, That's yeah. It's just slightly different process. So whereas before we'd um, claim the money directly from from government, we we from the European Commission, we now have to claim it from the government, and they have to claim it from. Them. So okay. we still got access. No, a lot of lot of questions coming in. A lot of interest there. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting uh, talk this morning uh, from from you both. So, look at I suppose um, just maybe following on from that question uh, that Pat had there, kind of tied in together. Obviously, you you have a strong base in um, the UK, but how much of a uh, have you managed to get into Europe and into the uh, the world market? And the, the has the uh, Brexit issue has that impact on your ability to get into Europe? Uh, any any bit? So that was just two questions there, kind of joined together. Molly, do you want to talk from a leaf mark point of view, and then I'll talk about research opportunities? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I can do. So from a, from a research opportunity point of view, it it really hasn't um, affected our ability to carry that on and our relationship. So we we are quite fortunate in having the 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 horizon projects that we've been a part of previously obviously we've made those relationships and we've got those networks now already so and we're, we're in a really good place a really nice place that people approach us to support them in in projects um i don't think it would be fair to say that we've seen a decline in interest since since brexit at all um and then obviously in terms of you England uh, with our ELM scheme, our environmental land management scheme, there's been quite a few opportunities with tests and trials around that. Um, and from a from a leaf mark point of view, just before Molly answers, we're you know we're in 19 countries still. Um, it's we're also partnering, so we're with Tesco, Waitrose, Marks and Spencers, um, Aldi. I always get mixed up Aldi and Lidl. So sorry, one of one of those. So we've got growers coming in through the retailers, supply and retailers as well. So we're we're in a really strong position. Yeah, um, I was just going to say the same. OK, OK, so that, that's good. And I suppose then just maybe to, to delve a little bit into the actual process of uh, developing the, the farm plan. Um, maybe, Molly, you, you could delve into that a little bit. How, how is it the farmer that decides or is it the, kind of the advisor that decides or how, how does that interaction uh, work? I think it's a it's a combination of both so it is it is context site and site specific so the standard is tailored to every all all different farms um we, we have management plans um as i've said which for, for most of the sections which help structure the farm um practices um so people must adhere to those um, but like I said, it is site specific and people can adapt to those different different practices. Um, 
and the certification bodies know of that process as well. Mm. And do we say, obviously, it's you're, you're continually improving. So I presume that there's a kind of a the bar keeps rising. So the first year you wouldn't necessarily be asking a farmer to do everything. How, how does that that work? How do you set the the targets for a farmer every year? And I suppose um, what are the standards that uh, the uh, align yourselves to? Are the EU standards or the international standards or the the British standards? What are the what is the the baseline standard that you're kind of working off? So uh, Molly, do you want to take that or do you want me? To? No, you. You go first. So the the leaf mark standard, I Molly mentioned it previously, is um, you need a baseline scheme. So you, there needs to be whether that's sort of like global gap, red tractor. Um, there needs to be that that baseline for leaf mark to to add on top of essentially. So it is about continuous improvement, but there are essential control points. Um, so if it's your first time, your first audit, and your first time becoming leaf mark you still have to meet all of those essential control points. You still need to have a baseline scheme. Um, but our control points are not set in that um, they, you know, for example, soil organic matter or soil quality, the control point just references that you need to be improving. There needs to be an aim to improve soil quality. We're not saying that your soil organic matter needs to be X percent, Y percent. So the auditor is looking for evidence of practices and justification of your targets, not so much looking for actual figures, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then in terms of baseline, like Molly says, our standard goes through revisions. So that's the TAC, so the Technical Advisory Committee. There's a public consultation. So there's quite a huge involvement and a huge amount of work that goes into developing the standard so we've just released version 16. We're now working on version 17 of the standard, which is going to be released in a, in a year or two years. So it's like it's a constant process. Yes. Yeah. OK. And just just to add on top of that, the, the targets can be more or less ambitious, as I've said. Um, and if you do have any unforeseen circumstances um, that uh, make you know the results not as good as, as you expected, that's mm -hmm. fine as long as you let us know. That's yeah, it's it's totally fine. Um, as long as we are seeing some continuous improvement over time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose there's one very specific one about agroforestry, and would it be possible to expand on the agroforestry options on a farm, and how's how's this worked out? Yeah, so, so the agroforestry plots that are on our demonstration farm. So, um, I've been to one of them, and he's he's quite fortunate in that they've um they're they're a big estate mm -hmm. so and he has the support of the landowner so he sort of he can turn around and say i'd like to try all this and the landowner will say yep that's absolutely fine so there is you know we do have to recognize that that is a privilege to have that opportunity um in terms of how it works with integrated farm management it's 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 what it's really difficult to explain it is what works for your business if you can if you want to try it and you have the resources available to trial it and then go for it there's nothing within the standard necessarily that says you have to implement agroforestry um it's a method that that can be used we talk about it within the least sustainable farming review so when we look at nature-based solutions and more sustainable practices it's something that's referenced and it's part of some of the research that we're doing well we're a, we're a part of in those big projects um, that they can, if people are really interested on our website, there's a few resources around agroforestry. And if um, they look on the LEAF network map, you can sort of highlight the demonstration farms with specific niches. So you can highlight agroforestry and it will take you to that farm's site and that case study. You, you mentioned there, you mentioned there uh, the, the demo farms, and I suppose one of the questions that's come in is how do you support and coordinate the uh, the, the, the demo farms? What yeah. do you give them to make them that bit special to be demo farms? So there's there's nothing, there's no sort of exchange of, of monies or anything like that, if, if that's what people are asking. No, it's more, it's more, I suppose, how are they, how, what, what makes them demo farms? Yeah. How do they... So it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a process. So they have to express an interest in becoming a demonstration farm. 
And then it's a process of looking through the application form, their reasonings as to why they want to become a demonstration farm, a farm visit for us to sort of see how they're implementing integrated farm management in terms of all aspects. So they need to be really strong on their community engagement and their, their, their public engagement, as well as all the, all the other areas. And what the kind of the key thing for a demonstration farm is, is that really, is their willingness to host events, to have people out on farm, to support the development of LEAF and integrated farm management. So it's just an, it's, it's just an application form, essentially, um, on paper, I suppose. But once you've become a demonstration farm, it's about supporting integrated farm management, supporting other farmers and, and being open to having other farmers come out to educate other farmers, to share knowledge. Um, yeah. And who does the work? For instance, if I'm or if there's a, 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 a an event being organised on a, a demonstration farm, what what does that look like? Is there a, a group of staff who, who come in and, and support that process, or am I left a little bit on my own to do that? No, no, you're supported completely. So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, we delivered our integrated farm management training, our introduction to IFM training, and that was on one of our demonstration farms. And and it was this time around, it was me that did, delivered that and organised it. So it's it's a matter of approaching a demonstration farm and saying, are you available on this day or this day? Are you open to hosting? And then it's a it's a bit of a mix, really, because obviously the the host needs to make sure that there's a room available, etc. And um, you quite often do farm tours, so they need to make sure that they've got that prepared or a trailer prepared or something like that. But in terms of the logistics, that's the leaf team, that's us. Okay, and I suppose that I'll hand back to Noel after this. But is there a linkage between the sustainability side of the the inspection and inspection for food quality, food assurance? No, so that's where your baseline scheme comes in. The right. um, leaf mark is, I want to say it's an environmental assurance scheme, but it's more. It's, it is more yeah, than that. It's sustainability. But it's sustainability primarily, yeah. So all that food security, um, sort of animal welfare, that the legalities side of things, that need, that is covered in your baseline scheme. LeafMart is that next level looking at sustainability. Okay, no. okay um, I suppose just, just um, one or two more here. So typically uh, the recruitment of farmers, farmers uh, come to you, uh, to, I presume, it's, it's, you don't target farmers or any or any particular sector. It's it's very much farmers come to you guys. Yeah. I mean, we do a lot of engagement. So we do a lot of talk. So um, if there's different events, for so example, um, the fruit, um, the National Fruit and Veg Show happened this week. We were there. We had a stand, Groundswell. We have a stand. Um, we, we do go out into industry events and talk about, so we do recruit farmers in, in that way, but generally they become aware of it. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, a, a specific question around the animal welfare um, point. So it's just a, to, a bit of a clarification for the, for the listener. Uh, can you help me understand your point on animal welfare? I'm not sure I understand it. Uh, is it that leaf um, doesn't deal with it or, or is it covered with the red tractor or one of those other areas or, or how is animal welfare dealt with under your programme? So we have an animal husbandry section within our standards, which has animal welfare control points. However, that is supplementary to Red Tractor, who focus primarily on the animal mm. welfare. So we go based on them. Um, yeah, so they set, the, they set the baseline standard and, and you add to it then? Yeah. yeah, we add to it. It is covered, yeah. Yeah, okay, very good. No, very there's, good. A, there's a, a question yeah. in there, and it, I suppose it, it alludes to, I suppose it, you talk about the relationship between farmers and and, and non-farmers and trying to, to uh, put a lot of work into developing that relationship. It's probably not at its highest point in recent times. And uh, I suppose the question was, how do you plan to position farming and, and farmers as a solution to, to, to climate change? Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? Um, I, it's it's about education, I think, at, at the end of the day, and that's where LEAF comes in, and that's our point of view. It's educating consumers and the public. So the work that LEAF Education do is incredible. Um, when there's Open Farm Sunday, for example, there's posters around talking about the different areas of IFM. Um, we do quite a lot of notice boards, for example, and it's something we touch on when we do our training. It's quite a big session, excuse me. 
about how to develop those relationships and strengthen those relationships. And from, from our point of view, I think you need to work at the local level first. So whether that's going out to your village hall or to your local school and just saying, you know, this is what we're doing on farm this season and this is why we're doing it. And just starting that education at quite a, a small scale, but in the hopes that, you know, you can educate maybe three people and they can educate their family and three of their friends and, and then it grows. So the power that an individual farmer has actually is quite is quite huge. Um, and another thing that, that LEAF do is support the training for, for those for our farmer members. We have a thing called Speak Out training and it's just supporting farmers in, in how to maybe use social media to the best of their ability, how to respond to comments, because that's that's the other issue, isn't it? Social media, as, as great as it is, it has given voice to it to a lot of people. Yep. Um, so it's how do how do we manage that and how do we respond to comments? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I there was a, that was a question I was going to ask you about was uh, that that community engagement and, and the importance of that from from a mm. kind of an education and awareness point of view, and, and you've kind of that covered there very well. But I suppose just maybe going back to to the to the farmer um, again, is it is is it across a broad spectrum all all enterprises of farming or, or do you find that it's it's more the the fruit and vegetable growers as opposed to the livestock or or is there any kind of trends there that you would see or any areas where you'd like to see a bump up in the number of farmers that are in it or, or you know what's what's your cohort of farmers that are are in the in this in the program um i think it is there are a lot of horticultural growers um and we are i think looking for more livestock farmers um but i think in recent times that we've seen an increase in both um yeah becky do you have any anything yeah, to, just to, add? to echo that a pro, I, I guess our biggest cohort of farmers in terms of the sector is horticulture fresh fruit and fresh produce basically yeah um but there's quite a few misconceptions around that uh the idea that leaf mark isn't a livestock scheme which isn't isn't true um we just don't have many livestock farmers as, as part of leaf marks so are primarily fresh produce horticulture and then arable some ornamental and then i guess our smallest cohort would be livestock mm. and and uh, is dairy are you you include dairy and livestock yeah sorry yeah yeah okay uh, there's a question here uh do you collaborate with farm consultants uh and, and others in 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 the industry uh to try and engage more farmers or to have them as as if you want ambassadors or or uh yeah those people who will who will extend your message yeah so leaf itself we're not advisors or consultants we, we are we are a charity looking to develop more sustainable farming but we do work we have um a program of advisors and consultants so we work with like like you suggested advisors and consultants and they um go through sort of a bit of a process they go through submitting evidence and interviews and then they are sort of verified as leaf advisors and consultants so they can go out on farm and give general advice around sustainable farming, but then they can also reference integrated farm management and LEAF, and we will recognise that the advice they are giving is, is supported by us. Uh, and and there's, I suppose, a, a question there in terms of the incentive to farmers. Do farmers find themselves able to leverage the uh, LEAF uh, 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 and the LEAF mark to increase the prices that they get or, or what is the incentive for them? So I guess there's a, there's a, there's a mixture. There's, it's just general market opportunity. So when you are leaf mark certified, you can supply into a number of retailers because more recently retailers are requiring the leaf mark scheme to, to, to supply into them. So there's that opportunity there. And then also if you're not supplying into retailers, it's that, it's that mark, isn't it? It's that stat sort of a statement that you are sustainable. So it's, you can, a lot of our leaf mark farmers do box schemes and sort of supply to their local area rather than supplying into retailers. And through that, they get more opportunities. 
Okay, you in the map you showed on on global, you're in, you're involved in a, a number of developing countries, uh, and I'm just wondering uh, on the social side, and I suppose something we haven't talked about yet is kind of ethical farming from uh, uh, one of the key aspects, um, particularly in those countries. But is it something that's that's considered in 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 the UK and and mm -hmm. at European level as well? Molly, do you want to talk about the um, social audits and the, the leaf mark standard? I think I'd have to I'd have to uh, give that question to my line manager. Or... Well, it's so that we we um, reference that social audits have taken place. So it is um, it, it, organization and planning. We talk about staff welfare and employment welfare. So it, in terms of sustainability, it's not just environmental and economical. It's social health as well. So there's the community engagement aspect, but then there's also your staff and your responsibility for your staff and your workers, whether that's physical health and safety, whether that's mental well-being, it is all covered within IFM and referenced within the LeafMark standard. Yeah, and there's a couple of a couple of questions there in relation to measurement and uh, to what degree, for instance, you 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 mentioned yourself uh, uh, solid carbon content. To what degree are you measuring? aspects of, of sustainability at, at, at farm level? So our leaf mark, I, I was talking about it in two aspects, from the leaf point of view, from just being a farmer and implementing IFM and driving sustainable farming forwards, and then from a leaf mark point of view. So if I address it from a, from a leaf point of view first, there's no requirement to record that information as, as a leaf farmer. The Leaf Sustainable Farming Review is our online self-assessment management tool. So when you become a member of Leaf, you, you will get access immediately to this online self-assessment. Now, this online self-assessment is broken down into the different areas of integrated farm management, and they ask questions and provide guidance and supporting practices. So there's opportunity within that online review to input figures and data. And we will use that sort of as anonymously and aggregate it to provide impact reporting. But there's no requirement as such to do that. From a leaf mark point of view, there is a requirement to record it, but there is no threshold that is acceptable or unacceptable um, because we want to recognise the complexity basically of, of, of farming in that maybe one year you had a really you had really rough weather or maybe one year you had to get the plow out um so it's it's not about saying that's good or bad it's about are you doing the right things for the right reasons hopefully that answers and, the question yeah and just just one there maybe on on the other element of what you work on is, is education and um uh maybe i put you have you have partnerships and, and things going with universities around research could you maybe give us a flavor for what sorts of things you're you're looking at from that point of view that you feel you need additional um additional research and additional te technologies for yeah so yeah. one thing that we quite quite a lot of our demonstration farms are working with our innovation centers is looking at robots um everyone's getting very excited <laughs> around robots and robotic harvesting robotic weed control so it's looking at how to optimize productivity and use of inputs and, and resource use. And then another thing that's really big at the moment within the industry, I think globally, is looking at carbon credits. So it's looking at how to monitor and measure soil carbon and the impact of different practices. So sort of modeling how change in practice might impact soil carbon and then being able to somehow quantify that that carbon and giving it a financial figure that so we're looking quite and that's from research in terms of universities but also research projects um through the horizon in in terms of of the publication are all your standards uh published and, and available online i think you did mention yeah. that there was there was a, a question in in relation to that um, so version 15 and 16 are online now version 15 is live as in what you're being audited against version 16 is available to look at but it won't be audited against until april okay and uh, i suppose there, there, there is a, a 
we have a, a system of demonstration farm here in, in Ireland uh, in relation to, to climate change uh, and, and general sustainability uh, called the Signpost Farm Programme. And the, the, the manager of the programme is on, he's wondering, could he get a demonstration and uh, possibly have a discussion with you at, 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 at offline at a later stage? So I'm, yeah, I'm sure we can, that, 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 can, that can be organised. In terms of the uh, influence as to who sets the standards, are the farmers themselves involved in, in, in that process or how do you come to uh, deciding that something is, is a standard? Yeah, so we have the public consultation um, and also, as I said, we have the technical advisory committee and part of those, some of those members are producers themselves. Um, so they are farmers and they have a say in what they feel is appropriate to have as a control point and the requirements and that goes through quite a, a lengthy process. We have about three meetings every year, three or four, we've had about four meetings this year um, where they have their say. Um, and that's also alongside, you know, the environment and industry expertise and retailers and also obviously permanent observers to, to make sure that it's, it's okay to, to publish. But, yeah, producers have a massive say in in the standard setting. Yeah. Okay, we have. Um, sorry, I was say we have the the leaf mark team that Molly sits in are responsible for standard setting. So they make the primary changes, and based on the research that we're a part of from from the innovation centres, demonstration farms, and projects that we do, we as an IFM team feed in sort of best practice into the leaf mark team. They may edit, and then it goes to the TAC in public consultation. And if I came to you as a as a large buyer of of agricultural produce and said to you, I'm interested in in having all of my suppliers be uh, uh, leaf certified, but I want to uh, put in a, a a little bit of nuance for my particular, yeah. you, you can you, uh, uh, yeah. accommodate that. So that wouldn't occur in the leaf mark standard. That occurs in the leaf sustainable farming review. So okay. to become leaf mark certified, you have to have completed the review online. It doesn't matter what your answers are as such. You just have to have gone through it and, and completed it. But we do work with some retailers exactly like you just suggested, Pat, in that they've added in questions. So if you are a, a supplier to a certain retailer, a certain group, you have to answer additional questions and you have to meet, meet certain criteria within those questions. And then you also have to meet the control points within the leaflet standard. OK, well, listen, our, our, our Believe It or Not is, is up. Bye bye. Uh, thank you very much for a really excellent presentation. I think it's, it's generated quite a bit of interest and I think there will be some follow up, as I, as I mentioned earlier. So thank you, Molly, and, and thank you, Rebecca, for your for your presentation, for, for succinctly and, and uh, comprehensively answering a, a lot of questions that were thrown at you. And thank you, Noel, for, for your assistance. Next week, we'll be joined by Lorraine uh, Belain. Lorraine is a postdoc in uh, agricultural economics uh, based in the rural economy section, and she'll be looking at assessing sustainability on European dairy farms uh, based on, on, on case study data. And with that, I, I will take our leave, wish you a good weekend, and our thanks to uh, Andy Boland and, and uh, uh, Yvonne Marr. Uh, goodbye, and we'll, hopefully we'll see you again next week. Thank you. You've been listening to the podcast version of the Chagisk Signpost series, the weekly webinar that promotes and examines sustainability in Irish farming. Don't forget to join us live every Friday morning for our latest webinar. For more, visit chagisk.ie. And you can also rate, review, and subscribe to the Signpost series on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Mark Gibson, and thanks for listening.